this is a picture of the truck that we had at Mine Expo. It's a concept truck that's currently at our proving grounds in Arizona. And what it's got on it is an application, a mining application that's been around for a long time that will help us try to re achieve these carbon neutral, carbon reduction type of goals. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. We'll talk about the objective, what a trolley system is, and this is a video of it. Any of you that are familiar with large scale mining trucks that go up in incline, you're familiar with travel speeds and things of that nature, and you'll notice a difference if we can get this to work with respect to this trolley application. Notice the difference, if you will, and compare it to what you've seen in the past with respect to diesel powered trucks going up inclines. Then we'll talk about the procedure and parameters in the study that we performed. One has to think about, well, if I want to utilize this new technology, if I want to achieve these carbon neutral, carbon reduction goals, I have to move a lot of material utilizing this type of application. What does that mean to my fleet that I currently have? What does that mean to my large scale mine plan and mining operations? So we're going to talk about the type of study that Komatsu did with respect to analyzing that as far as efficiency and things like that are concerned. Then we'll do, go into the uh, results and conclusions of our initial effort. Just to give us an idea, does it make an impact on our fleet efficiency, things of this nature? Then we'll hopefully have some time for questions. So let's talk about the objective. Again, we're familiar with haulage units. We're familiar with diesel haulage units. We are familiar to some degree with trolley. Let's st study the type of analysis we want to do with respect to large scale fleets. So we're going to look at a defined trolley line distance. We're going to look at whether it's one kilometer, two kilometers, three, three kilometers, things of that nature. And we're going to look at variable production amounts. We're not going to look at 10 tons an hour, or 10 million tons a year. We're going to look at 20, 30, 40, 50 to see the impact as, as you go up in annual volume requirements, what does that mean to your fleet size and how does that impact potential efficiency? Number of trucks you can put on a trolley line at one time. If I've got a one kilometer, can I put a truck every 10 meters? No, you probably can't. So how many trucks can you put on a line safely and what type of, what type of capacity do you need in that line to run those trucks? And then we're going to look at the results of our initial analysis and potential inefficiencies associated with that. Specifically with respect to congestion. What's another word we think of with respect to congestion in haulage units? We think of bunching, where you've got a number of units trying to enter into one point or come off of multiple roads, if you will, and enter into one primary arterial road. That, you'll get some sort of congestion and bunching. And that's the thought process with trolley. If we're all going to go to trolley and we're going to go with a large amount of trucks, are we going to have an issue trying to get on this one or two kilometer trolley line? So what is trolley? You saw a video of it. What does it mean in general terms, in simple terms? Trolley is essentially, it's been around for 30 years. You know, it was at Gold Strike. Someone said, well, where did it, how did it get to Gold Strike in the U.S.? And actually, this technology came from South Africa. It was used for probably 30, 40 years in South Africa over time. And it's essentially using overhead power lines to power an electric drive haul truck, meaning that it's not a mechanical drive vehicle like our cars, things of that nature. It's like a Tesla, but only in a big mining unit. So rather than powering those electric wheel motors, with a diesel engine, we're going to power it with an overhead power line, like you see with the trolley cars in San Francisco, you see on some bus installations around major cities. And what does this do? It provides greater power capacity to those wheel motors than what the, today's diesel engines can provide. You know, the diesel engine in this truck right now is about 2,700 horsepower. That electric drive system in that can handle roughly twice that horsepower. So today's diesel engines to some degree limit the performance of our large electric haul trucks. And then therefore, if we can get more speed, we can go up routes quick, long uphill routes quicker. And if we can idle that engine rather than use that engine to work as hard as it can going up that haul road, we can use power, we can consume a lot less fuel, which again is heading towards those targets that we mentioned earlier and our goals that we have. So again, here's what I just said earlier. Speed on grade increases at least 80%, if not two times. So in other words, rather than 2,700 horsepower, we're approaching 5,000 horsepower. And if we're going up an incline, that essentially 
what, doubles our speed almost, right? Or an 80% increase in speed. Diesel now goes into an idle state. So an engine of that nature is at 130 gallons an hour when it's working as hard as it can. So if I'm going up that incline at 130 gallons an hour, it'll be 20% of that roughly in an idle mode. Significantly less. So now productivity is going way up and fuel consumption is going way down. And as we all know, who's familiar with haul trucks? Engines are rated, what's the life of an engine rated on? It's rated on total gallons or total liters per, over time, right? Like engines of this nature are in the one million gallon range. So after one million gallons of consumption, you go into a major rebuild mode. So if we're reducing our fuel consumption, what are we doing? We, we are taking that rebuild period of time from maybe, let's say, year five, we're extending it out to six or seven. So over the life of a machine, maybe we're cutting out one rebuild, that sort of thing. And productivity-wise, what does that mean? I can move more tons over a period of time, or for a fixed tonnage rate, maybe I don't need as many units. So the impact of trolley has multiple advantages that the industry has recognized for years, and as I mentioned earlier, primarily in South Africa, and as for a limited time here in the U.S. Now there are concerns. Now trolley, I've been with Komatsu for 25 years, working out of our plant in Peoria, Illinois, where we make the big mining trucks. And yearly, if not multiple times a year, even 20 some years ago, everybody talked about trolley and the advantages and wanting to install trolley at their application and realize these pro production and fuel consumption advantages. But there's notable, neg not negatives, but things that go with it. One of them, the concern is the capital investment. It's not cheap to put in a trolley line. The design, the installation of the catenary line itself, the substations, things of this nature, are quite expensive, so you, to get a return on that investment, you need to utilize that line regularly and for over a long period of time, and you need to run tons up that line. Just don't run five million tons a year trying to recoup your savings in fuel and try to pay off a multi-million dollar investment. You gotta run significant tons, and you gotta utilize that system re regularly over a significant period of time. The other negative, and this is what comes up all the time, we were recently in Scandinavia, is that most trolley applications run three lanes wide. In a diesel application, you only need two lanes for your trucks, one going up, one lane for going up, one lane for coming down. Typically, a trolley operation keeps those two lanes and then adds another lane for the trolley. In case the system goes down, then you can still run diesel if you're working on the trolley line or if you've got a broken down truck or things like this on the trolley line, you can still run your diesel application. For all of those that you know that no large scale open pit mining, if you add another lane with, that increases your tonnage that you have to mine significantly. And that discussion point came up in a, in a meeting with a customer regarding what does this do to our strip ratio? What does this do to our mining costs, extra blasting costs, things of that nature? Can we overcome those costs with this trolley application? So see, and then here's the one at the, the next to last one is really significant, is road construction and maintenance. You must maintain contact with your pantograph system into that line. So if you cannot build and maintain roads sufficiently where you can travel smoothly as if you're going down the interstate and if you're going up and down you lose contact, that system will, the, Will, reduce, will remove itself from the line and now you're on diesel power. Well, and then you'll have excessive wear and tear on your parts as well that try to energize from that power line. So this is what gets a lot of people. A lot of people are in environmental conditions that a lot of rainfall, things like this, or they don't have adequate material to build good roads out of and dedicate themselves to great maintenance. This is an issue that they always kind of shrug as to whether this is even feasible for them. So it comes down to good roads running a lot of tons, utilizing the system regularly, so therefore your availability and your utilization of the system has to be high. They'll say to Kamasa, so they'll say, how, off, how, how many hours a year will I be able to use the system? It's just like a, any other piece of equipment, it has availability assigned to it as well. So that depends again on your maintenance procedures and things like this. You've got to be dedicated and disciplined for this type of application to work well. This is the relationship between trolley and the mine planning effort. So the mine planning effort says, listen, if I'm going to invest millions into a trolley system, I have to adjust my mine plan so I run a lot of tons up that system. 
and then a lot of trucks along that line accordingly, right? Typically. So then the trolley system integrates with your mine plan by saying, how long of a line am I going to put in? What's my staging distance? How close can I run trucks up and down that line in a safe, from a safety point of view and capacity of my line point of view, things like that. And of course, as I just mentioned, line power capacity. Do I have the power to run four trucks at one time up that line? And then the utilization as well, your target utilization for your system all come and work together in your mind plan as to whether this is going to be a feasible return on your investment. So here's the procedure and parameters that we undertook here to do this study. We selected the trolley length. We looked at one and two kilometers initially. We defined the capacity. We came up with a staging distance interval. We, and we defined the power capacity of our line accordingly to determine how many trucks we can put on that line. We de determined the quantity that we needed to meet our production requirements. As I said earlier, we looked at multiple production requirements, 10 million tons a year through 80 plus million tons a year. Then we calculated the productivity and fleet efficiency, and we didn't do it like on the back of a piece of paper like we have, like it can be done with simple equations. We used a special program to get the analysis of multiple fleets, multiple loading phases and fleets going up with their trucks up this line. So again, here's our one to two kilometer line. We use a staging distance of 250 meters. Note the trucks have to be at least a minimum of 250 meters apart. We defined our power capacity of the line accordingly based on how many trucks that worked out to on that line at one time. We determined the number of trucks required based again on the production targets and the amount of loading phases for those production targets. And we assumed a loader dependent application. What does that mean? It means that we've always got enough trucks to keep our loading tool busy. We're not under truck, we're over truck, that sort of thing. And then we used a proprietary discrete event simulation software to do this analysis of these multiple loading faces with their associated trucks, producing these trucks heading to one point, one point where they enter one line. So therefore, there's the, what is the theoretical concerns with respect to bunching and that sort of thing, which equates to fleet efficiency. So again, number of loading tools required for the production amount, number of haulage units required for the production amount, round trip travel time, and distance to the trolley line. And we had some fixed distances to the trolley line from these multiple phases. So here's a couple of examples of the, how you calculate the number of trucks per hour required for a loader dependent application. And the top one shows that the load time per truck into 60 minutes and the number of loaders will tell you how many trucks per hour you want to run up that line. Here's another example saying if you've got one loader A at two minutes to load a truck, the loader B takes three minutes to load a truck, how many trucks are you going to produce in an hour, in theory, maximum out of those two loading tools? And that number is pretty si simple math. That's 60 divided by two. That sort of thing, you end up with 50 trucks an hour. Okay, so now we had our input data. We put them into our software package. And here's our results. And what's interesting to note, so what we have here is a graphical display. The x-axis is your trucks per hour starting at 20 all the way up to 100 trucks an hour and the number of trucks you can put on a line at one time going from 2 to 4. And then of course this number of trucks 20 to 30 you're not going to load that and when you get up in the 50 range that introduces multiple loading tools right it infers multiple loading tools so this is a way to gauge how many loading tools represent these high numbers or each number value of fleet size wise. So for example up around 70 trucks an hour, it could be three to four loading tools. So again, in our software package, we're studying multiple faces. We're studying large quantities of trucks, variable number of trucks, and then we're studying one line itself. So we gotta go from various points within the mine site and hit this line and try to move up this line. And then our capacity of the line will define or help us understand efficiency. And what comes out of this easily, as you can see, if you've got a line that is only designed for two units, two truck, model, two truck units at a time going up the line, and you're trying to get 60 to 70 trucks going along that, or you need 60 or 70 trucks worth of production on an annual basis, you're going to have big problems potentially with respect to efficiency or congestion or, congestion or, or bunching as we talked before. It eases up as you put, have the capacity within your line to put more trucks in there. 
But the point being that comes out of this is that what we may have not thought about in the past, and, and you as miners and operators that are thinking about trolley, who have more sophisticated tools than we do, think about this, that if I want to run a large quantity of material up a trolley line, and I want to get my return on that investment, what does that mean as far as my overall operation, how many loading tools are supporting these number of trucks? And what does that mean as potential bunching or efficiency issues with the ability to utilize that line to its maximum capability? And that, that's, that is a significant effort that we don't have that type of mine plan knowledge from our customers, but we brought this up to various customers that we need to think about this sort of thing when we do the evaluation, the feasibility evaluation of a system such as this. Our next goal is to probably look at, this represents roughly about a kilometer of trolley line. Now we'll try to do this even on a greater scale, but it kind of piqued our curiosity to the fact that bunching can come into play in a large scale trolley application.